Good morning. Merry Christmas. My Christmas came early last night. It was a. <laughs> it, was, it was wrapped in very ugly paper, but it, a win is a win. We'll take what we can get. I'm so glad you're here. And gratitude, what a great new word. I am adding that. I love that. Sounds like an attitude of gladness. That's great. Uh, my gift to you is the shortest message of the year. At least that's my plan going in. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think, uh, by the way, uh, I know we've, we've got some kids in the room today. And so if your kid doesn't necessarily connect well with me and is letting you know that in no uncertain terms, it does not hurt my feelings. You're welcome to get up and go out into the lobby, but don't leave the building because we got some good stuff for your children before the day is over. Um, I think most of us are used to using some smart devices when we get into our car to help us identify where we want to go. And uh, we, we log in an address. In fact, if your device is uh, really smart, all you have to do is just tell it where you want to go. And, and uh, it, it just kind of helps you get there with turn-by-turn -turn directions. Uh, you know what I've never done, though? I've never gotten into the car and just said, where should I go? And I'm pretty sure that if I asked all the virtual assistants that are available to us today, uh, they would not attempt to answer that question. Today, I'd like to talk about how joy breaks into our world when God helps us with guidance. And we often think of God's guidance in terms of turn-by-turn -turn directions because we plugged in the location we want to go. But maybe the guidance of God looks a little bit more like getting in the car and saying, where should I go? So we're going to look briefly at a, one of the, the most astonishing guidance stories in the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 2, it says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw a star as it rose, and we've come to worship him. King Herod was greatly disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time the star appeared. And then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. When they saw the uh, uh, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and, the, and they bowed down and worshiped him. And then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. You ever wish you had one of those stars guiding you to really important decisions in your life, like which town you're supposed to live in, or what company you're supposed to work for, or the person you're supposed to marry, just some kind of little orb that glows and kind of hangs out over their head, and you know it's the right one, what school to attend. We always assume, we always assume those are the most important questions. Uh, but what about when I'm dealing with temptation, do I need guidance in that moment? What about there's, a, there's an opportunity for an argument, should I engage in it or should I withdraw? Or how about not just deciding who you married, but how you treat the person you've married? Or how about guidance in resolving conflict? Because some of us could use a little help with that. Or when to ask for forgiveness, or how to forgive someone that we would rather not forgive. Or who do you invite to the party? Because a lot of us don't ever think about 
seeking God's guidance in those moments. We can marry the right person and neglect our marriage. We could, we could live in the right town and miss the opportunity. We can go to the right school and take the wrong classes. Stars, as it turns out, are blunt, blunt guidance mechanisms. One cloudy night and you are done. And a lot of God's guidance seems to be on how to orient us and where we are right now and how to think about where we're going. So the Christmas story is just filled with amazing stories of guidance, one after the other. Uh, 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 Mary, Elizabeth, uh, the shepherds, Joseph, uh, the wise men, like all of these individuals have their own guidance stories. And here's what I want you to see, is that the joy God gives does not require ideal circumstances. In these stories, almost no one had an ideal circumstance. Mary and Joseph had a difficult journey. They birthed a child in an animal shelter. And, and, and shortly after that, they had to escape as refugees, fleeing from the country they were in to a country that they did not belong to. That's not easy. Uh, Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, had a geriatric pregnancy after years of infertility. The, the shepherds, when they got done staring at the newborn child, had to go back to their dead end jobs. And the wise men had to return by another route. Not a big deal to us, but back in that day, that was a high risk reality. Because when you went different routes, you're, you, you put your life on the line and you weren't sure of your supply chain. And yet, in every one of those stories, joy found a way to break through every time, every time. Don't you wish, don't you wish you had joy that could break through the darkest and most difficult of times and could endure the deepest and greatest challenges? Don't you wish you had joy like that? The joy of heaven is not limited to ideal circumstances. And we're grateful for that. So do we want God's guidance or do we want directions to the easiest life possible? Because that's the kind of prayers that I pray. I mean, I unashamedly prayed for the Bills to win last night. <laughs> and, I, and I had a couple of conversations with God during the game. And I don't know if he had anything to do with that. And I don't know if I learned anything, but there we are. No. Here's the thing to know about God is that he guides us to a full life, not an easy life. And that's where a lot of us make our mistake is that we assume that an easy life and a full life are the same thing. I wonder if we really, what we really want is a life where no guidance is needed at all. Everything's just obvious and easy. So, but here's the interesting thing is that when we seek guidance, it's usually because we're lost or we're confused or we're afraid or we're unsure, or we're unable. And this is what's amazing. Every one of those things requires a posture and, and, a, and a sense of humility. And this is what I want you to know the Christmas story reveals to us, is that God does his best work, not when we are doing our best work, but when we are our most humble. When we acknowledge, I don't know what to do. When we acknowledge, I'm struggling here. I don't know how to get out of this situation. That when you pray prayers like that, that's when heaven does some of its very best work. So here's some guidance prayers you could pray. Some, some recommended guidance prayers you could pray. Uh, number one, uh, will you show me your ways? Your ways. Not just the path, but your ways. Because God's ways are different than our ways. We keep wanting our path to be easy and to lead us to desired outcomes. But our circumstances can actually produce a lot of anxiety in life. But God's ways can produce peace even when we're facing anxious things. God's ways include grace and patience, not just to receive, but also to give. That's his ways. God's ways, rather than putting someone down, calls us to put others first. That's God's ways. It's amazing where we can go when we walk in the ways of the Lord. God's ways help us give up the illusion that I am in control of anything. That's what this season can teach us. We can trust God. Second prayer of guidance is, will you teach me your truth? We tend to favor tricks 
and hacks and cheats over truth. What's going to get me what I want? What's going to help me accomplish what my goal is? And, and, and the truth, the truth is, is that truth can eliminate options I would prefer would stay in play. Truth can require me to, to, uh, to do things that I would rather avoid. Truth can be very inconvenient, but Jesus is insistent on this. Truth is actually what makes us free. And the truth is, the truth is we cannot save ourselves. That's why Jesus came. And that's the good news for everyone who's humble enough to recognize they cannot save themselves. If you're trying to save yourself, you will wind up going places that you would rather not have gone. A third guidance prayer, will you help me do what is good? Not just what I want, but what is good. And what is good is not just what's delicious, like I'm looking forward to some good food today. Anybody else? Yeah, and I'm looking forward to some good presents tomorrow. Anybody else? Some of you have no expectations at all. <laughs> As your faith is, so may it be unto you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but here's, here's the important thing to, to think about, is that what is good for us is not always what we would prefer. And what's good for others is not always what we would prefer. And, and to, to seek God for what is good. That's a very bold and courageous prayer to pray. And, and there's something else just to think about that. And that is that some of us think, well, God only guides good people. You know, Psalm 25 says he actually instructs sinners in his ways. That's a very powerful truth. So the guidance stories are replete throughout the the, uh, the, the Christmas story, uh, an, an angel guided Mary, a dream guided Joseph, an internal quickening guided Elizabeth, a star, the scriptures and dreams guided the wise men. And that's not an exhaustive category at all. God's word is filled with all kinds of stories of guidance, everything from peaceful visions to an internal voice, from prophecies to scripture. God has lots of ways to help us Find a full life, not just an easy one. So here's some questions to ask yourself. I gave you three prayers to pray. Here's some questions to ask yourself. Am I open to God's guidance? Or do I just want God to take me where I want to go? Uh, secondly, what is God saying to me through the good things in my life? A lot of times we enjoy them, but we never look at them to see if God's telling us something in those blessings. And then what is God saying to me through the challenging things in my life? Is he trying to help me learn something or orient my life in a, in a different way? And then who has God placed in my life that could give wise counsel that we don't have to figure everything out on our own? What God-given responsibilities has he given you? And lastly, is my imagination too limited? Because I have a great imagination for what can go wrong, but I really struggle to figure out what could go right. Last point, God's guidance will never lead you away from him. Amen. Never. So whatever option you're considering in your life, if it's creating some distance between you and God, you should probably mark that down as not coming from him. Because just like we heard from Pastor Jonathan earlier this morning, God is with you and God is for you. And that helps bring joy into an anxious world. Would you bow your heads? Father, um, would you help us today dare to hope and trust that you can guide us to a full life. And that when that guidance comes, joy breaks into the most unusual, the most difficult and disappointing circumstances. It gives us something to celebrate. And we're so glad for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now the moment you've been waiting for. And that is, if you look at the chair underneath, underneath the chair in front of you, there's a candle, all right? If everybody can pull that candle out 
and I'm going to give you some very brief instructions that will be super helpful. So if everybody could just stand. There you go. In a moment, someone's going to come by and uh, they're going to light candles at the end of the rows and then you're going to help light the candles that's in your row. And here's the important, here's a real important rule. You ready? If your candle is lit, keep it straight. If your candle's not lit yet, you can tip it so that it can get lit. But once it's lit, we don't want any hot wax falling down on anyone. And so that's how we, we keep that from happening, all right? And then at the end, there'll be an opportunity to snuff out those candles. There are snuffers on the end of your row. Any of you who are ninja-like snuffers, you are welcome to do that. Otherwise, everyone else can just do the tried and true method of blowing it out. And what you are right now is one of the largest choirs in all of our community. And you have an opportunity to lift your voice to participate in the joy of this season. Let's lift your voice.